Hi, and welcome to the very first lesson in the Pipeline Power Ups course. In this lesson, we're going to talk about why you should be running onboarding and implementation in a separate pipeline than what you're already using for sales. And there's a couple of really good reasons why you should be doing this. First, the customer outcomes for sales and onboarding and implementation are very different, right? Sales is working towards a closed one. Onboarding and implementation is working towards a successful launch, successful adoption, and rollout of the tool that your customer has just purchased. Also, both of those teams have very different reporting needs. They care about different data, they care about different metrics, and they likely run their reporting and the way that they look at that reporting very differently as well. And finally, and probably most obviously, is that each team is going to have very different requirements for the data that they want to see and the way that they want to organize their pipelines. So let's talk about a couple of ways that you could be approaching this and why that might not be the best option. So first of all, and we see this from time to time, is you could add an additional stage for onboarding or different additional stages for onboarding to your existing sales pipeline with deals in HubSpot. So here we have closed one and closed last, but maybe you add an additional stage for onboarding, an additional stage for training, something like that in your sales pipeline. The problem there is that you now have intermingled teams, intermingled stages of the customer lifecycle in the same pipeline. It's going to make it more more difficult to run effective reporting, more difficult to understand who owns the customer or who owns the process at that particular moment in time, and ultimately is going to just be messy as you scale and make it much harder to run a defined, repeatable process. Something else that we often see is that folks will try to run onboarding and implementation in the company record. And maybe you can create a property here for the, you know, the onboarding status in a dropdown. Maybe you're using notes to manage the different things that need to happen. But it becomes really difficult to track the process over time and understand where that customer is in the life cycle and how long or where they're getting stuck in the process as you're going. Because you can't lay out company records in a pipeline and report on a pipeline in the same way that you can with deals, tickets, and custom objects. So let's talk about what it actually looks like once you put your onboarding or implementation process in a pipeline. In the next video, we're going to talk about where or which HubSpot object that pipeline should live in. But for this example, we're going to use deals. And you can see we have some stages laid out that are going to track with the specific stages of the onboarding or implementation process that our team and the customer need to work through together to get to success. So we can go all the way from ready for onboarding and sort of prepping for the onboarding process to kick off scheduled, account setup, training, go live, you know, usage review, all the way through the process, ultimately to successfully completed onboarding or churned during onboarding. Either of those things are great to know. And we will get into how to design a specific process and how to map that out in future videos. But for now, the first thing to remember, a separate pipeline for onboarding implementation allows your team to define the process that is different than your sales process and really focus on making the customer successful. I'll see you in the next video.